Today we're going to be building the Talon X1 drone from Airwolf 3D. We're going to go ahead and lay our accessories aside. We have our radio here. This will be controlling the drone. Go ahead and set that aside. And you'll see in front of us here we have our 3D printed parts. So the whole key for this project is to print all of the frame parts on our Airwolf 3D printers and then build it with all the accessories included in the kit. Now you'll see here there's a lot of support removal that has to be done. Mostly in the canopy that I'm holding here. We have our battery tray here that has a little bit of support to remove. We can go ahead and pull that off with our fingers. And we have our arms here, which will have a little bit of support material in the, uh, the holes that we'll pull out. And then our main frame here, which will actually pull out some support material also. And you notice we have two colors of arms. And the reason why we did this is so that we have our front of the aircraft with the brighter colored arms. And this way it just helps you when you're in the air flying, you can tell what is the front and the back of the quad. Okay, so using a, a uh, small hex wrench and some needle nose pliers, we can easily remove this support here. And we're gonna start off on the main frame. We're just going to go ahead and remove the support material that's inside of these little cavities which will hold our, our arms. So using the needle nose pliers and the hex wrench we can go ahead and do that. Here you see the little holes which will have our, our uh, threaded inserts in there. We'll go ahead and remove that as well. Okay, so using our hex wrench, we can just kind of stick this guy in in between some of the support material that's in these holes here. We'll actually be in inserting some threaded inserts here using our soldering iron. So we want to make sure these cavities are pretty clear. And we're just going to kind of pop out that support material in there on both sides. It doesn't have to be perfect, but do your best not to uh, remove any material outside of the hole or damage the outside of the hole area. And we're going to do the same thing on these arms here as well. Okay, for the canopy, we want to be very careful. There's a lot of support material in here. And I usually start off with the needle nose pliers kind of on the outside and then just kind of go little by little and pick out chunks of the, the support material. This is going to take a little bit of time. Definitely be very, very careful as it's a thin canopy and we don't want to break or crack the side walls of the canopy at all. Great thing is if you did break it, you know, you can fix it with super glue or, or another adhesive or if you really want, you can just reprint it. It is one of the longer parts to print on the, on the drone, but uh, you know, if you had to, that's the great thing about the 3D printing. See here, all the support's been removed. We're gonna go ahead and throw all that away. And let's go ahead and lay out our parts. We wanna see what we have here. We have our canopy, we have our main frame. We have our front arms, which will be the white ones in, in my build. Now you can use any bright color for this. If you wanna do yellow or orange or red, they all work really well. And you can see them from the ground when your drone's up in the air flying. And then we have our battery tray here on the right. So now we're actually going to insert the brass threaded inserts into the frame components that need them. And as what these are gonna do is they're actually gonna capture screws when we screw on our canopy and install our arms into the quad. So let's go ahead and open up our box. 
and we are going to look for the bag that contains our brass threaded inserts. This will be in hardware bag 2. And we're going to heat up our, our soldering iron and we're actually going to be placing these brass inserts on top of it so they'll heat up. And if you notice there's a taper on one side. We want the taper to go inside the hole. And we're just going to firmly press once we find the hole with the insert and the insert's just going to slowly melt into the plastic. We want to be careful. We want, don't want to go too far in there. And if it's crooked a little bit, we can just use the soldering iron to, to straighten it out. Be real careful when you're placing the inserts on the soldering iron. It's going to be very hot. You don't want to burn yourself. So here again, we're going to put the, the uh, tapered side inside the plastic. Just so that it's flush with the surface of the arm. And we'll go ahead and do our front arms, which in this case are our white colored arms. The tapered side goes into the arm, and we're going to press it in until it's flush on the surface. Now on our frame, we want to do our two canopy mounts. This is where the, the uh, canopy will be screwed onto our frame. We'll set it in the hole, we'll let it melt a little bit, and we'll go ahead and press firmly so that the insert sits right inside that hole there and is flush with the top surface of the frame. And we'll do our last one here. Now these inserts really make it nice because you don't have to use really long screws or catch nuts or anything which you know can create a lot of uh, weight and with drones we want this thing to be as lightweight as possible. So here I got a little bit out of place but I went ahead and corrected it and can go ahead and go back in and melt it a little bit and make it straight. Okay so that concludes our frame preparation. We're now ready to install some of the electronics. So we're now going to go into the box and find our hardware bag one. And we're going to find our motor mount screws here. And we want to dig to the bottom of the box. You're going to find some foam packaging around our motors. Go ahead and grab those out. We can put the box to the side. And start removing the motors from the foam packaging that they're in. Now take a look at the motors. You'll have two with silver lock nuts on them and two with black lock nuts. These have to go on the correct arms as the motor rotation will play a big role on how these lock nuts screw onto the motor. Let's get our hardware bag one and remove some of the screws. Using the correct hex wrench, we'll go ahead and start installing the screws into the motors through the bottom of the arms. We want to make sure when we're screwing these on that we line them up so where the wires run directly across the top of the arm. We'll do all four screws, but we won't tighten them yet. We'll keep them loose so we can rotate and move the motor around if we have to.
Now you can see we have an equal distance around the outside of the motor to the arm. Once we get that and we have our wires running down the length of the arm, we can go ahead and tighten the screws. And the best practice here is to do it kind of in a pattern. So do one screw and then go directly across. Don't go in a circular pattern. We want to go from one and then across to the other and then we can do the other two. Don't over tighten these, but make sure they're nice and snug. And here you can see the wires are running down the correct direction on the arm. And we'll go ahead and do our other three arms here. 